It's been six months since Danny's back surgery, and as his recovery progresses, his attention can finally turn to creating the biggest and most ambitious riding film of his career. With a huge Glasgow location secured, Danny will spend the next six months creating and filming his ultimate ride. I mean, I feel like I'm a kid, and I'm given, like, I don't know, it's like the biggest toy ever. Kelvin Hall was once the home of the Museum of Transport, but with the vast space cleared out and due for demolition in nine months' time, it's provided Danny the perfect location to transform for his unique new riding film. This project's been a massive learning curve for me. Um, I've definitely felt the pressure a lot more than I have on other projects, uh, because just re really because my riding's not quite where I want it to be just now. It will be three months before the set for the new film is complete, giving Danny the chance to finally start riding every day for the first time since his surgery. Yeah, it's cool to finally have my bike in the warehouse here. And last time I was here, my friends were building some boxes. Look at them, they're pretty cool. Uh, we've also got my matey uh, Duncan here. All round rad trials rider. <laughs> uh, I'm just here to kind of help out and move things around. It's really cool not to have to ride street in Glasgow when it's pouring with rain. It's been a long few days, a long few weeks. It's nice to kind of finally start getting uh, a little bit of health back, you know, like it's gone from me riding uh, maybe once a week and, you know, having one good ride a week to being able to kind of ride almost every day. Yeah. Hopefully this is the beginning of uh, something good. He has had a serious back injury. He has got problems and no one's saying he hasn't and I'm certainly not on the doctor's arm. But I think, you know, I don't think, I think it's obvious that it's just part of this is to do with the pressure of the project and understandably so, he's being given a blank sheet of paper to do what he wants and even though there's no pressure put on him from anybody else that means he just puts himself under huge pressure. I just hate riding in front of the camera and I'm not riding well. I can't imagine being in his shoes. He's made three pretty, pretty amazing films and done some incredible tricks and now we're in a position where you know he wants to step up, he wants to do more and bigger and better. And regardless of everyone else's pressure he puts it on himself. Danny's idea for the new film is quite literally massive. Bringing a big idea to life demands a bigger production team than Danny's ever worked with before. On the team, got uh, John and George from Vision Ramps um, here. They've built all these. Oh my God, there's Danny. It's Danny McCaskill. Oh my God. It's been, it's been a little bit like working in the bike shop again. Just me working, Danny watching. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> you know, they're the kind of the concrete, the cement to kind of make the whole project work. What's yes. On? What's going on here? Um, making some props for Danny's imaginary world. <laughs> then I've got uh, friends Nash and Duncan. He pretends to do a bit of work, but he's not really. What are you talking yeah, about? He'll do that. Look how clean his clothes are. I'm just good at it. Look at me. You know, these projects don't happen without extremely good friends that um, really helped me out. I've got Mike Christie in producing the whole clip uh, with Rachel and his team as well. Yeah, we've got Wesley Cameron, uh, who's the project manager, um, who's just kind of keeping everything moving. After reeling all the different names off, it's by far the biggest production I've ever been involved in. Stu's, you know, directing the clip. You know, Stu's been a good friend for a number of years now. We made Industrial Evolutions together in 2011. Which was, which was really fun, so it's, it's going to be good fun working with, with them again. It would actually probably be towards the end of 2011. We'd obviously come off the back of work doing the Industrial Revolutions film. He decided he was going to do a new project, it was going to be something different, and I think he was just over my house, you know, and he's sort of like, it'd be cool for you to be involved, and, you know, there was no, there was literally no talk of any of what it's turned into now. You know, I'm feeling the pressure now to try to produce the writing, you know. Everyone else has put in all their work, so it's going to be my turn soon. To push his skills to new levels, Danny must ride at every opportunity, and there's no shortage of people willing to join him. 
Today, he'll be braving Glasgow's weather and hitting the streets with good friend and riding legend, Martin Ashton. <laughs> Martin's coming all the way up the road, um, and I thought we'd go out and do some street riding in sunny Glasgow. I'd say this, this spot's probably one of the sort of go-to spots in, in Glasgow. I've seen this on some videos, I think, actually. Yeah, it's some good. some BMX vids? Yeah, it was yeah. in the Living for the City part yeah. and stuff, so it's, uh, it's just good fun. Fun good little take. spot. Yeah. And you're used to this weather. This is standard. This is, this is a good day in Glasgow. <laughs> My feet are soaking. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get some riding done. Sun, sun's coming out. <laughs> It's been really wicked, riding with Danny. I mean, I know he's a younger rider than me, but he's weirdly one of my heroes too. So to see it all live, he's got, he's got some amazing skills. Uh, and they're unique skills, which is what's really nice. I wish I could do some of them. I'll go home and practice a little bit, but yeah, they're, they're sort of, maybe I'll leave it to him actually. There are some tricks for the new film that Danny won't be able to perfect on Scottish streets. Some of the biggest he's ever tried to master. Back at Kelvin Hall, the team have taken delivery of an essential piece of kit to help Danny realise his ambitions. Uh, we've got Peter over from uh, Bag Jump, um, showing us how to kind of set it up. Definitely exciting day for the, the kind of project and for riding, because I'm going to learn all the tricks that I've kind of always wanted to do, which is good. So, I've got my present opener. Um, <laughs> No, I've never been on a, a bike jump airbag, so I'm, uh, I'm pretty excited about it. Definitely how they're, they're the best in the business, so. Pretty excited myself, actually. It's a, it's a custom model that we especially made for Danny, 10 by 10. It's usually bigger size than the standard sizes. So, um, yeah, let's see what happens. Hope it works. Look at the size of it. The modern day ones are uh, pretty sophisticated, as you can see. but. It's pretty awesome to have it in here uh, for the next few months to, to learn some new tricks, hopefully. Look at this beastie. I'm just thinking of a thousand different ways I want to use this airbag. So, um, I would say we're going to blow up the bags. Shall we come switch on? All right, okay. Pretty cool about this. It's been very hard to kind of to think creatively when I've been in the middle of recovery as well. I am still I'm quite worried about actually producing the writing for it. I can only do my best. But uh, yeah, it's never good enough, unfortunately. It's like being 10 years old again. Throughout pre-production, Danny's film idea has been kept a closely guarded secret. But as the set begins to take shape, he and Stu need to leave the warehouse and go in search of some of the bigger props they need. And it may take some explaining. This is seriously cool. Ah, just trying to decide what tank we want. A week till we start filming. Yeah. Is what's coming together now kind of what was in your head when you first thought it? 
Yeah. Uh -huh. Is it looking similar? I think I think so. Months ago, we were sitting in meetings with you and your your sketchbook, figuring out how we can turn that what's in your head into like into a film, and now we're like right there. Yeah. I think the thing for me that's a bit weird is like you kind of like go, oh, we could just get a tank and I could ride along the turret. Yeah. As if it's like quite a normal thing. Uh, Whereas, but this, but this but, is quite a normal thing. Obviously, <laughs> not, the, is. not the tank, not the tank part. But if, if this was a setup in the street, then I would ride it every day. You know, or like obviously not a tank, but if this was like a railing and that was a wall. But for you, it's kind of like it's totally in your comfort zone for riding. Yeah, I think so. As long as my tires grip on it. More importantly, I just want to have this in a. Just just like, I just want to be able to ride it. It's cool. <laughs> <What>? <laughs> this is ridiculous. Ah, what do you want? Uh, well, I think we'll get a tank in. <laughs> oh, it looks so good here. This is the stuff that was in my kind of daydreams. Yeah. Or the stuff that was when I was drawing my little book. This is a, this this thing right here was like, ah, yeah, it'd be cool to get a tank. Yeah. Are you nervous? Yeah. Are you genuinely? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Danny's first three riding films were each unique in their own way, but none had the ambition of his new project. And after over a year of planning and preparation, the cameras finally begin to roll on Danny's new film. The concept remains a closely guarded secret, so as filming begins, the location goes into lockdown. It will take 60 long shooting days to capture the film assuming Danny doesn't get injured along the way. It's been a very hard few months. It's an exciting time, you know, we're kind of almost there. The light's at the end of the tunnel. And it's, it's a matter of just sort of everybody linking together and bringing their expertise to the table. I mean, at the end of the day, it will be what we see on film will be the, the proof of that pudding, but that's yet to come. It's been good seeing him getting back on the bike, actually, the last few weeks. It's been exciting to watch. I mean, what we've done now is a completely different kind of riding because riding on the street, you find an object and you interpret that object in your own creative style. In here, you're using your own creativity to, to build that object and come up with what you want to ride on it. And it's actually turned on its head for Danny because he's made it endlessly difficult for himself as well. Just really want to make something that we're proud of. And everyone's involved to be kind of thinking, well, this has been really so sort of worth it, you know. And if that's the if if we're proud of it, then hopefully it'll go out to the to sort of to everyone else, and they'll they'll like it. Mm -hmm. 